In today's video, we're going to talk about how to integrate Ansible with Jenkins. When you first started managing infrastructure, you probably did what everybody else did. You logged into your hardware, you did your installations and configurations, and then just went on. Over time, you may have created shell scripts to standardize your configurations. But eventually, you started using tools like Terraform, Puppet, Chef, or maybe even Ansible to handle your configuration needs. But did you ever think about using Jenkins to manage these processes for you? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Here's where we're starting at today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.2, and attached to that controller, I have an agent with a label of Linux. On this agent, I've installed the Ansible CLI. Also, when I installed the controller, I selected the Install Suggested Plugins, so we've installed no extra plugins to integrate with Ansible. Also today, we have a sample repository that we're going to be using. And you can find the link to this repository down in the description. As a quick overview, you can see that we have two Jenkins files, a playbook, and an inventory file. Before we dive deep into what the playbook is going to do, let's go ahead and set up a job to go ahead and integrate with our Jenkins file one, just to make sure that everything is working correctly with Ansible. So let's click over to our controller. We're going to say new item. And for this, we are going to say Ansible, and we're going to select Pipeline. Let's go down to our pipeline. We'll change this to Pipeline Script from SCM. Change this to Git. And our repository URL is this URL. And we are on the main branch. And finally, we're going to test with Jenkins file one, because that's just our quick checkout. Let's go ahead and click Save, and let's go take a quick look at Jenkins file one just to see what we're doing. And you can see here that we're just connecting up to an agent with a label of Linux, which is what our agent has. And we're going to check the versions for Ansible, Ansible Playbook, and Ansible Galaxy. So let's go back over to the controller and press Build Now. As you can see here, as it starts up, we are connected to our agent one which is where our label of Linux is. And as the repository clones in, we can see here that Ansible version is at 2.9.21, Ansible Playbook also at 2.9.21, and Ansible Galaxy finally also at 2.9.21. Now let's go over and take a look at our Jenkins file too to understand what we're going to be doing in today's video. So as we go back over, take a look at Jenkins file two, what you'll see here is that we are running an Ansible Galaxy for our requirements YAML because we have some specifics in our playbook that have a dependency on our requirements YAML. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. And then you can see that we're running our Ansible playbook against an inventory of MariaDB hosts. And this is a little bit of foreshadowing. You can probably guess what's going to happen. Our playbook is going to be installing MariaDB for us on a different instance. So within our inventory will be a third server. So we have a controller, we have an agent, and now we have a third server where we're going to be installing Maria. We're going to pass in a private key, and then the playbook is actually doing the installation of Maria. And finally, you can see here that we have an Ansible private key. That's the environment variable that's also referenced down here in line 10. We're pulling in a credential that will be named MariaDB-Private-Key, and that's going to be a secret file. Let's go take a quick look at our playbook. Pretty simple, MariaDB. We're enabling firewall D and opening up a couple of ports. Then we're setting up the MariaDB yum repository. And then finally, we're installing MariaDB server. And then at the very end, we're just doing a verification that MariaDB was installed by calling MySQL dash dash version. Do you remember that we were going to be running Ansible Galaxy? The reason why is due to these commands right here, Ansible POSIX Firewall D. In our requirements YAML, we are bringing in the collection that is used in order to access Firewall D, which is Ansible POSIX. We also brought in the Community General collection for a couple of other commands that aren't specifically being used in this playbook, but I brought them in just for general usage purposes. We've talked about using a secret file. By referencing in our playbook, dash dash private key. So let's take a look at our playbook again. Excuse me. Let's go take a look at our Jenkins file again. There we go. As we are referencing private key, if you were to go look up the documentation for Ansible playbook, 
you can see here that private key is a reference to a file. But we can't guarantee that that file will actually exist on our agent. But we can provide it via a secret file credential type. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over here to my controller and let's go set up a credential. So we're going to go manage credentials, add credentials, and we're going to change the type to a secret file. And we're going to browse the file and the file that I have is actually named, if I can find it here, Maria DB private key. So we'll attach that in. And the ID that we're using, let's make sure I get this right, is going to be mariadb-private-key. So let's copy that and paste that in for the ID and the description, and then click on OK. Now let's go back over to our job and change our Jenkins file reference from Jenkins file 1 to Jenkins file 2. And let's see what happens. We'll click on Ansible, Configure. Let's change our configuration to Jenkins file-2. And if you remember for Jenkins file dash two, what we have is first, we're going to run an Ansible Galaxy collection install. That's going to install specifically in our case, the Ansible POSIX collection. And then we're going to run the playbook against our MariaDB YAML playbook using the inventory file of MariaDB hosts and using the private key of private key that we're pulling in from our Jenkins credentials. So let's go back over to our job and run it. So if we click on build now, let's watch the run of two. We can see that we're running Ansible Galaxy. So it's installing the two instances that we had, Community General and Ansible POSIX. And this can take a couple of minutes. So let's see what happens. Now that we've finished the Ansible Galaxy installation, now we're into our installation of our playbook for Maria. So let's watch the rest of this. And you can see here at the end when we ran MySQL dash dash version, we have the output of MySQL version 15.1, but more importantly, distribution of 10.6.2 MariaDB. Now, one more thing I want you to note. Notice as we went through and ran the playbook, we see OK for gathering facts, enable and start firewall D service that was changed, 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 changed. So all of these things changed. Let's go and run this one more time with no changes. Let's see what happens. We do a build now. Let's take a look at three. We can see here that again, Ansible Galaxy collection install is running again. As it runs, it's going to find that these entries already exist. So it's already it's skipping those. Now watch this as we go through here. We're getting OK, OK, OK. So as we run this playbook again against our MariaDB instance, we can see here that everything just worked out OK. So there were no changes made because we didn't make any changes to our playbook. So why should you use Ansible instead of writing your own scripts? First off, unless you are a scripting wizard, being able to quickly apply changes to your target machines may not be as simple as you think. Secondly, unlike some other tools, Ansible has no agents. Nothing against using agents, but being able to manage new machines without having to bootstrap anything is great. Finally, if you cannot run your systems immutably, meaning anytime you need to do an upgrade, you destroy and replace with a brand new instance, then using a tool that is built for mutability simplifies the long-term maintenance of those systems. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.